Hey guys, how's it going? Today we are going to do some fall cleanup in the flower beds. We've had two nights where it's frozen. Uh, it did last night and then the night before, so some of the coleus is looking bad. Some of it still looks pretty good, those that are a little bit more protected. So it's kind of nice if you can get out and do a little bit at a time as the weather starts taking things. Now my approach to fall cleanup in the garden has changed over the years. When I worked down at the garden center full time, it was just crazy in the spring. So necessity just demanded that I do most of it in the fall uh, because I simply did not have time in the spring. And most guides will tell you not to do the majority of your cleanup in fall. Leave the canopy of the plants because those will help um, insulate the plant, the, the crown of the plant, the roots, help keep moisture in, just provide extra insulation, which is true. Uh, but honestly, uh, zone five, at the time we have now been moved to a zone six i never saw any adverse effects from cleaning up in the fall and if that's when you have to do it that's when you should do it um, so it's kind of evolved my approach has i do leave a lot more now than i used to i don't like to look at like a big mushy pile of leaves like so lilies i'm going to clean those up today uh, so i just kind of go plant by plant and decide like will this hold up in the winter or is it just going to be a big mushy mess in the spring is it going to provide forage for wildlife that's one of my biggest factors now i like to leave seed heads for wildlife i like to leave some things that i know will stand up to our weather so that you know birds can get like harvest things from them and get underneath them and um, you know find protection there so anyway most of my perennials are still looking pretty good right now I'm just looking at the big pile of lilies over here <laughs> that's why I use that as an example I want to clean those up today uh, so anyway I just want to show you a few things around in the garden and then we're gonna get to work so like this area right here isn't that beautiful with the morning light kind of shining through there's Hebe standing beautifully right there I've done nothing to this flower bed this year because as you know we're going to be redoing this whole area. So I knew I was going to be cutting this flower bed differently because the water is really difficult in this area to keep the grass nice. In fact, let me just show you. It's very patchy. And when it's very hot outside, this area just looks stressed. Like this whole area takes on a very brown orange vibe. That's not awesome. But this bed is just full of gorgeous layers. So Russian sage right here, this is in um, Cheyenne Sky, I think, Panicum, or Apache Rose, one of the two. Uh, but gorgeous fall color. I leave all of this stuff up. Actually, yeah, all of this stuff stays up through the winter. We've got the lemon jade sedum right here. One of my favorite sedums because the blooms are yellow. And then look at this apricot blush that comes in. I love it. I feel like I had something planted here. What did I have here that I dug up? Oh, blue spruce. Blue spruce died. And I have no idea what happened to that blue spruce. It looked good for like two years and then it just started to decline. And I don't know if it maybe it was because of the willow. I don't know though. I mean, the willow can use all the water it wants and that blue spruce should still be okay. So I don't, who knows? Sometimes there's no reason or no reason I know of. So we have a new opportunity to put something in there. There's a Winecraft black smoke bush here. This is the Firefly Peach Sky um, Yarrow. Now, isn't that beautiful? This is why I do not trim it back. This is from the first flush, flush of blooms early summer. This is from the second flush of blooms late summer. So you always have some beautiful stage that you can cut for arranging. These hold up really well, like they have sturdy stems. They don't fall down easily in snow. Just love it. Gorgeous Hawthorne. The Morden Blush Roses have started to bloom again. And I accidentally trimmed these. I forgot that I wanted to not deadhead them earlier in the season after their first flush because these create the most gorgeous rose hips. But honestly, I do think that it helped with rebloom because this is like its third time at least of reblooming. Aren't those just delicate and beautiful? I do see one hip over here. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous to use in arrangements? And they dry beautifully too. We also have pink perfusion salvia. There's some variegated iris in here. There's a tiny wine nine bark. Honeysuckle, that's an evergreen. It actually stays like this all winter long. There's some blooms, gorgeous. I planted some echinacea in here, which I can still see one, two, three. I think that's actually all I planted. Did I plant more than that? I think I only planted three. They're all there still, and they've been deadheaded. Um, Black-eyed Susans, I used to cut all of these back in the fall. And now I look back and I think, what a shame. Look at how beautiful these are. 
These look gorgeous with a layer of frost and the birds really love them. We got some work to do over here though. That coleus has seen better days. Now you can tell the lobelia here. This is a Laguna hmm, cloud white. I think it's a new one for next year. Awesome plant awesome in the landscape it held up in our heat which is incredible and then you can tell how much more cold tolerant it is than coleus there so i want to pull some of these things i'm going to leave the hostas even though we do cut hostas back in the fall these will color up bright yellow as we get even colder so they're actually really beautiful fall interest so i leave them until they do that and then we will cut them back and to my knowledge i think hostas and peonies are two of the most important ones to absolutely cut back in the fall because they tend to harbor things over um, diseases and insects and things like that so those are a good Good one to put on the list to do this fall, even if you touch nothing else. I just can't believe we're getting close to November. And like, I don't know if you can see over there, Supertunia is still going strong. I've got blooms on this clematis over here. The roses, these are icebergs, are just amazing. Look at these. It's just been a wonderful year. Now this is not an iceberg. I don't know what variety it is. It was here when we moved in, but it's beautiful. Over here, we've got a few more hostas, kind of an example of what they're gonna start to do. So they do still provide quite a bit of structure in here. They haven't started to flop yet, um, but they'll do something like this right here. See that yellow? And so in just probably a week or so, these will look like a glowing mass right there. It's actually very pretty. And I love this flower bed. There's something so peaceful about it. First of all, the birch, which yes, the birch has eyes. That's a very common, like right there and right there. I see that comment a lot whenever I show this tree, but this whole flower bed is almost 100% full of the palest of yellow columbine. But even when it's not in bloom, which it is for so much of the summer, even when it's not, it just looks like the most delicate sea of beautiful leaf structure. I just love it. And then lamium up here, which I totally love. I would have lamium in every single flower bed in my garden. Okay, I'll show you one other section of perennials in the back garden that I do want to cut back and then we should probably get to work. I could just like show you around the whole garden today. <laughs> We just talk about all the plants. It's so beautiful out here. I just kind of want to soak it in. I know that these days are numbered. On our way into the back garden, these are peonies, which we will cut back this fall. But see how beautiful their fall color is? So I'm not even ready to cut those back yet. And this is the Stand By Me Clematis. Don't they just have the most gorgeous seed heads? Love to use these as an element, like a filler element and in a flower arrangement. So I leave these up as long as possible. I like to use them even if when they've kind of browned out a bit. Ah, here it is. <laughs> I don't necessarily love to look at piles like this all winter long because, you know, once you get rain and snow, they just get plastered to the ground. And I don't know, just not loving that, that look. So I'm going to cut those back and clean up this area, just kind of rake it up a little bit. We do have a white pillar, Rosa Sharon in here, a rose that I've tried to dig out like a hundred times, <laughs> not a hundred. I exaggerate, probably like four times. We've tried to dig this one out and it just still keeps coming back. We've got caryopteris in here and butterfly bushes, uh, which we will not cut back until uh, spring. So anyway, we've got some sedums down here. I'll probably, typically I don't cut sedums back, so I might just leave those even though they're kind of flopped. They still have some pretty seed heads there. Hey, Russell. And then moving down the line here, oh, we have a climbing Bathsheba rose. Maybe I can find a better bloom on the other side. They're very lightly scented in my experience so far, but I planted a few of these and they are just beautiful. Oh, here's one. Oh my goodness. Mm-hmm. Planted, I think three of these. They're a climber. I planted in bare root last spring and they are liking their situation. And even this sedum, which gets way too much water, and that's why it's all flopped over, but it's, I think this is just Autumn Joy, which is a very common variety of sedum. It was here when we moved in. And even though it's kind of flopped over, I still leave it because I love the way it looks in the winter time. And there's some really fresh ones still that I can use for cutting. And I like to use them dried too, as a dried element. I do think I'm gonna grab a kneeling pad though. I usually don't do that because you know usually there's like grass I can put my knees on, but everything's wet this morning. I don't really want wet pants right from the beginning of the day. Also, I don't mess around with my Felcos when I've got a huge stand of things to cut back like the lilies. I just take my hedge trimmers after them. 
In terms of other tools I'll be using today, of course my kangaroo pop-up bag here, which already has some leaves in it. Uh, we've got a little shrub rake here. I like this one because it's really flexible. It doesn't wreck plants when you need to rake over them. And then I'll use my Felcos for more fine jobs. So I think we'll go back and start with that big patch of lilies first. Something else to think about, because I just ran across it right away when I started cutting back these lilies. If you've dealt with any kind of insect issues on your plants, it's a good idea to cut them back and discard the leaves. You can see right at the center of this plant when I started to expose it, check out how many aphids were in here. Like all those little gray things all over the leaves, dead bodies. But I also, somewhere in here, found a bunch of adult aphids too. Yep right there gross so we're going to cut these back not just because i don't want to look at the dead leaves all winter i mean that's a huge reason but i also don't want to provide a nice cozy home for all those aphids and eggs and things like that i mean even if it's a different issue i mean aphids spider mites all those sorts of things we want to discard those so we don't create a possible huge explosion the next season So I cut the lilies back, raked them up, blew off the area just to clean up the pavers, and then I sprinkled a little bit of diatomaceous earth around, and that's what the white dust is. That takes care of soft-bodied insects like aphids. Um, so since I exposed like tons of aphids, I thought a nice sprinkling would not hurt. And diatomaceous earth is about the most gentle thing that you can use out in the garden. Perfect right here in this case because I only really need it to work a, like a little bit <laughs> because I'm hoping most of the aphids are on the leaves I'm gonna get rid of. Whatever's left over in there will probably die from a freeze, but just in case, I just wanna take care of the problem. Um, and the diatomaceous earth, as long as it doesn't get wet, it'll stay effective, which we don't have any rainy days on the forecast um, and we don't overhead water back here. So it should stick around for a while until those aphids are handled. All right, let's move on to the coleus that needs to be pulled. All cleaned up. I am always sad when I have to pull coleus out. It was such a beautiful red accent right here, which I loved. I think it was the variety, is it Sedona? If I'm wrong, we'll put it on the screen. But I figured out why the uh, Lobelia did so well all year. It's not supposed to be this wet. <laughs> like my feet were starting to sink down into this flower bed. So I gotta figure out what's going on here. Also, while I'm over here, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the sweet potato vine. Um, it did get nipped a little bit one more night and it probably will look pretty bad. The begonias, however, are looking awesome. Double up pink. And then around this side, there's a couple things. Everything's looking pretty good in here. Like look at the coleus. See just a different location and it's stood up to the cold. I mean, I think it's the tree over the top of it. It's kind of tucked in here. On that side, even though it's got like a background of shrubs, I think it's just a little bit too open over the top. But I'm going to pull the Supertunia Priscilla Improved. They have seen better days. I was impressed with their growth though. I have grown Supertunia Priscilla before and did not have as good of results as I had this year with the improved version, which I think is coming out this next year. And I always loved it because it looks like a Bordeaux, but it's 
it's a double. And I was always bummed that I couldn't really use it because it just didn't do well. But I used it in the barn pots and in the landscape and it performed well in both locations. So I'm really happy about that. I don't think there's much over here. I do have a geranium that's self-seeded in this container and a clematis that's looking pretty bad. So I think I'm gonna cut those back. Powdery mildew, weird. My stuff doesn't get powdery mildew here. <laughs> not, not normally anyway. And over here, things are looking pretty good as well. Uh, the Albrighto coleus, hanging in there. And I love cleaning flower beds out this way, just a little bit at a time, instead of just coming in and cutting it all back all at once, because it kind of helps ease you into winter a little bit. It ease you, eases you into a more empty look in your flower beds. potato vine all cleaned up the coleus in here the newly noir actually looks pretty good but you can kind of see see right where the sun is that's where the other coleus was so you can see how much more exposed it is it's just not as protected by something over the top of it over here super tunias have been pulled i kind of blew off the area a little bit it looks a lot better just to have that cleaned up and then this planter right here which more lamium i love this plant so much so i cut back the clematis it's still in there kind of hard to see right now let me see if i can shade this planter uh, it's like in half sun half shade right now and it looks kind of like christmas meat valentines <laughs> i guess i have some fall annuals still sitting back by the greenhouse i kind of love it though because this will go you know we've got some fall color in there with the red there um, and then it'll look kind of christmasy and all of these plants are really cold tolerant so they should do okay right here and the geranium roots are still right there they're actually growing around this trellis here so i kind of had to cut it in order to get it out it was really kind of stuck in there um, but we've got the ornamental cabbage the white pansies and the red snapdragons and when i water i will clean off the excess soil there doesn't that just look sweet tucked in right there i love it okay so now planting that container up which i didn't plan on kind of made me feel motivated to plant up the galloway urn which i might plant it up the same way so this urn right here recently just cleaned it out of the summer annuals i had the truffula pink gomfrina luscious citron lantana which is a new one and blew my mind evolvulus the truffula pink of course did great the lantana did great it's a full sun area right here in the afternoon the blew my mind evolvulus though i keep trying it and it just doesn't do it it sits there and it looks okay but it never flourishes and i think it's because we don't stay warm enough believe it or not. Like it gets really hot every single day here in the summer, but it dips down at night. We're high desert, that's just what it does. Um, and I think they like it in the south where it just stays hot day and night. No escape from the heat. Um, so anyway, it was okay as an accent plant, but it never really like did it for me exactly, but it was fun to try. So I'm thinking we go get more snapdragons, cabbage, and pansies. The pansies I do have left are looking <laughs> kind of sad though. I kind of have to put two together to make them look really nice. I do want to show you real quick what I do to prepare the cabbage in order to plant it in a container like this. You can plant it all as one, like from the same root ball, because that's how they are planted. But you also can separate them, which I like to do. And I kind of manhandle the root balls too, in order to fit them easier. So I got to do a little grooming too. First of all, roots at the bottom of the can. I just peel those off so I can get the can off. And then I groom off all the junk on the bottom. Oh, look, that's a slug that did not originate here. That came from the grower, I think. Ugh. Okay, so now I kind of just take my thumbs and go in between two of the trunks there and I just start easing them apart. So there we go, look at that. I just made that root ball a lot smaller. Now the other two. So 
there's the second one, third one, and I'm left with this right here. When you have such a small reservoir and you've got such a huge, you know, that's a gallon size can, that's a huge root ball. It makes it really hard to tuck them in. So it's just so much easier when you can reduce the size. And this one has plenty of roots left. Never say never, but I haven't had a cabbage decline after treating it in, in that way. I really love how this turned out. It's just so simple, but so pretty. It's got enough like bold texture in there with the cabbage, some really bright pop of color with the snapdragons, which I know you guys might be surprised to see red, but I usually like for Christmas and fall things, it fits in a little bit better. And these are annuals. It's not like a perennial that's coming back every year. Um, I still do need to water this container and kind of clean it off a little bit on the top, but everything fit in there beautifully. And these plants are super cold tolerant, like I said, so these should last a while. I want to give you guys a quick look at this area. It is filling in slowly but surely. Uh, there's nothing else that needs attention today. Uh, but, you know, I've got Golden Dreams Coleus right here, which did really well. Surprisingly, this area gets nailed with afternoon sun and I didn't realize it. In fact, I was worried there for a minute for this Japanese maple that I transplanted from uh, behind the pond, actually. The one that um, Greg Woodstock came in and installed here last year. Anyway, it needed to be moved and I moved it here. It did fine. Uh, we've got Lamium again right underneath. We've got Hakanakloa, Japanese forest grass, the Ariella variety in there. Longwort that I transplanted from the front garden underneath the crabapple tree. This is the variety spot on and it is gorgeous. There are a few hostas in here um, that I transplanted. Little Lime Punch. I don't know that I can like emphasize how much I love this plant. You know, we just planted these this year. We replaced a hedge of uh, Limetta hydrangeas that just did not thrive in this area. But look, they just, they're so pretty. They didn't skip a beat. They handled our heat and the wind. And this has been the best year ever for hydrangea color for us. They just are gorgeous. I don't think there's any burn on them either. Like no burned blooms, which is crazy. So you can kind of see this one is a little bit more fresh. So they come out of the creamy white and then they start changing. You'll see that one's changing a little pink and then to this gorgeous deep color. Even deeper than that too. I like that one right there. Whew. The drift of hookahs around the seducer hostas there doing really well. I've got some dipped in wine coleus. It just kind of filled in this area. I didn't really do much here. You can tell. It's because I was going to try to do a little shroud to kind of cover all of this stuff and I never got to it. So I didn't really want to plant heavy um, knowing that I might need to access this area. I also transplanted a bunch of Brunnera back here with these ferns and I'm going to plant more Brunnera back here. I have more in containers and I thought a big mass of that silver color with some fern foliage uh, popping through it would be really pretty. And there's a uh, Japanese maple right there, Katsura. Empress Wu Hosta. This is a Diane Witch Hazel that I planted this year. Isn't that gorgeous? The fall color is so pretty and then we'll get winter blooms. I'm so excited for that. No, it was a Helena, not a Diane. Wu La La Hosta. Uh, there's some just salvias in here. The Oh So Easy Paprika Rose right here, which still has some color on it. Really beautiful. We've got the Weeping White Spruce. Great accent to evergreen over here, growing beautifully. The Sweet Romance Lavender. One of them got a little bit pushed down by some of that nine bark over there, but I'll fix that. More Sweet Romance there. The Italian Ice Roses. I did have to move one because it was in the way of my hydrangea hedge. So I had three over there. Moved the one over here, didn't skip a beat. There's more Lamium here. We are going to finish this Sprinter Boxwood Hedge and the Little Lime Punch Hedge uh, probably next year. This lilac is probably gonna come out. There's just so much dead in it. I could probably pull that big branch down all by myself. Right, there's so much borer damage in there. It's so weak. That's why we're seeing all this dead in there because these were not treated. We've got some kind of Wigella right here. I can't remember the variety some hellebores. Uh, we've got black pearl hookahs with some acarus ogon grass in there. Limelights are looking great. Yeah, 
just coming together. And then we get to landscape this whole big flower bed next year. I'm so excited. I think we got enough cleanup done in this part of the yard. I'm gonna run out to the cut flower garden. I know a few of the things I have out there need to be pulled. So just a little bit at a time, I'm just gonna tackle probably a couple of things and then I'm gonna be done, I think. I didn't intend on planting pots, so that was kind of an extra fun bonus. I also am gonna do something around this AC unit too. It's on the docket, on the list. My list is long. All right. My intention is to clean up all the bean kind of refuse that we have here from when we picked the other day. Look at this. We just did our flower picking day two days ago. I'm so glad we did it then. Let's look at these flowers now. Oh my goodness. The birds though have been hanging around certain plants and so I'm gonna leave some stuff up as long as I can. I'm gonna pull the marigolds. They're not looking super hot. Ooh, that basil's seen better days. We'll get that pulled. Oh, but you guys, the lettuce, butter crunch lettuce, cilantro looking awesome, the spinach down there looking great. There's still some good Cosmos in there. Some China asters that are done. And we'll clean up all the pepper plants from our harvest day as well. Eddie is back there working on the cut flower shed, which is super exciting. But you can see right here all the sunspot sunflower um, heads. We went ahead and pulled all the plants, but we saved all the heads and just put them on the ground so the birds could feast. And Benjamin had a great time doing this. He thought it was so fun. There's a lot of other things that we could pull today, but I think just those few things will do it. We'll get those done and then call it for the day. It for today's projects what a beautiful morning out here it's just it's absolutely gorgeous and temperatures between 50 and 70 that's my jam i do not like our hot summers i don't like it really when it gets above 85 like i don't i don't love to be out working in it so like mornings and evenings are the best time when it gets hotter for me i know that's probably the same for many of you guys so we're kind of in the same the same boat there thankfully we don't have humidity um, so at any point of the year really so that is nice either way I love it when I can start layering up to work out in the garden because I like to wear like big vests with big pockets so I can just put all of my stuff in there <laughs> it's so handy anyway I just wanted to give you guys a look at what we are doing to kind of start fall cleanup um, kind of how we attack it and really how we attack everything here is pretty systematic small consistent efforts um, to keep everything under control instead of letting everything become this huge job um, so there'll probably be many more oh there's a bee did you see it fly in front of the camera right then Anyway, you'll probably see more project videos where I just bring you guys along to show you what I'm cutting back at what time. And it's just been a beautiful fall so far. I mean, I can't even believe we're just a couple weeks from November and our super tunias still look amazing. <laughs> a lot of our annuals still look amazing. So I'm, I'm loving it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope it was helpful and we will see you in the next one. Bye.